<sighs> Greetings, everybody. Welcome to my review of Cocoon. I have emerged from my chrysalis so that I can bring this video to you. Let's begin. Jeb Carlson has had quite a successful career thus far, having previously been the designer for both Limbo and Inside during his time at Playdead. Now in the director's chair and under a new studio, Geometric Interactive, Jeb gets to show what he can do when given free reign over a 3D space rather than the traditional 2D that Playdead is known for. The result is a mind-bending environmental puzzle game where the more you think about what it's presenting to you, the harder it is to really comprehend. And as such, I almost recommend just turning your brain off and just going through the motions while going through the entire experience as it's honestly kind of simpler that way. You are an insect creature that is birthed onto a rocky desert landscape. Not long after this, you come across an ore, which acts as your main tool for problem solving. It can power various machines that help you progress through the world, and also is a world of its own. The environment you start off in is not the only one that you visit. As you progress through the story, you encounter more orbs that have worlds of their own. And things start off simple enough with just jumping into one world, activating machinery to progress forward, but as more and more orbs get introduced, and those orbs can go into those orbs and it, it all just becomes very complex. Part of this complexity comes from these orbs that aren't really part of an inventory system. You have to carry each one to its next destination. And when you're juggling multiple at once, it can be easy to lose track of where each one is. By the end of the game, there are so many elements to keep track of that it's seriously impressive by how well it all blends with one another. That's honestly the best thing I can say about the game, how ingenious all the mechanics come together. Jep definitely has a mind for getting all these moving parts to work in tandem with one another, and you'll honestly feel like a genius as you solve these puzzles, even if you're not always sure what it is that's happening in the world. Strangely enough, I found myself to very rarely be stumped by a puzzle. Not because I had some master understanding of what was going on, but because I had a simplistic mindset of how it all worked. I understand what was being asked, but if I started to really think about it, I would start to get confused, which were the points that truly had me perplexed. One of the best examples of this was towards the end of the game where it wanted you to jump out of the world you were in, but you are jumping really back into the world that you are in and look again if i just shut my brain off and i just kind of did it, it it made sense i get you were just warping to an earlier point in the level that you had the orb in but when i really started to think about the mechanics and exactly where i was going i just started to draw a blank now, i'm not saying that's what everybody's experience is going to be i'm just saying that that's the experience i had with it as such, I never really had too much of a hard time getting through the game. I expected to be stuck for long periods of time at points, but aside from two distinct moments, I usually only spent no more than a few minutes on any one puzzle, if even that. And that's kind of disappointing, especially with such a complex mechanic such as this. The game also doesn't evolve past said mechanics. It essentially is the same game from beginning to end with only more balls to juggle, yes, pun intended. And look, I, I get it, each of these orbs have their own unique uses, but it didn't really do enough to change the way I approached anything. There are times that you get into boss fights, but these are incredibly simple and probably require even less brain power than the main puzzles themselves. And there's also not a whole lot of them. I mean, I think you go through the last one at about maybe halfway into the game, I guess you consider that last encounter to be a boss fight, but it sure as hell did not feel that way to me. 
The story is also lackluster, which is a shame following the amazing visual storytelling of both Limbo and Inside. Both those titles kept my mind long thinking about the events and what it ultimately meant after I finished the game. With Cocoon, I pretty much understood what was happening almost the entire time, and I never felt compelled enough to dive back into it like with the other two. Because of all of these elements, Cocoon is definitely my least favorite of the three titles, and I don't think I'll be jumping back into it anytime soon, which is a shame because, as I stated multiple times now, it's such an interesting mind-bending puzzle mechanic. I'll also mention that there's a sort of secret side mission, if you will, where you have to awaken these dormant entities throughout the world. I, this isn't really hard to do, and a vast majority of them don't require anything more than exploration to discover. But if you're interested in a bonus cutscene at the end of the game, then I would keep a lookout for them, as you do need to awaken them all to unlock that. In the end, Cocoon is a mixed bag. If you have Game Pass, you should definitely give it a chance, as its mechanics are interesting enough to keep you entertained for a while. Plus, it's a short game that can be beaten in a session or two. Everybody else that has to pay for it, you can skip it for now. At least wait until it's on sale. Not quite at that next evolution I wanted it to be, I give Cocoon a 3.5 out of 5 with a recommendation to rent it. Uh, which you can't, as it's a digital title only. Okay, I, I, I can see the pattern forming here. I, I guess just go to a buddy's house and make him buy it so you can play it. That's the equivalent of renting, right? Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you today. We are more than halfway done now with the five nominees, so please come back tomorrow as we tackle the next one. Until then, everybody, I will be going back into my chrysalis to sleep. So please stay safe out there and have a good one.